I'd like to call our meeting to order, All please. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. People go first, or you want me to go first? I have to have roll call. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Laura, have roll call, please. Okay, Mrs. Carter? Here. Mrs. Hatch? Mr. Hodges? Here. Mrs. Davis? Here. Mrs. Hanson? Aye. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Sure. We'd like to thank you for meeting with us. Uh, we met the first time when we did um, this um, phase one. It has been very successful and we'd like to present the phase two to you. And the gentlemen are here and they are going to tell you the success that we have had with phase one. Um, you know, three of you were there and so you know what the presentation was <clears throat> and how well it's done. So I, I don't think there's anything else. Is there Dr. Tanner? Yeah, uh, the main thing is um, to let you know, we, first of all, we have apologies for not getting this out to you earlier. We, our email has been down for some, uh, quite a while. So we're pleased that it's up uh, again, but that's really um, getting uh, the presentation to you earlier. And then the second thing is as we went through the development uh, and the discussion about phase two, uh, as you go through, you'll see that uh, we asked uh, in our faculty envelope to really go in and do a, an in-depth analysis and then also to give us <laughs> Would you like for us to give you a time to breathe? That was a new test for him to see if he could make it through the house. <laughs> give uses excuses in the economic development process. So. Oh, we'll right. accept that one. <laughs> yeah. For sure. schools. I thought I might back up just a little bit for those of you who were not uh, present for phase one to understand the principles of what we're talking about tonight. The statute we work under here in Virginia allows government entities to look at operational expenses and the means or process to reduce those expenses through a program that ABM offers. The differential between what your operating costs are today and what we can get you to, that differential that we create called guaranteed savings. Those savings that we guarantee fund the project. Um, the advantage to this is uh, a school board, for example, doesn't have to come to the board of supervisors and ask for money. What we're going to talk about tonight is using the money that the school district is already spending in a more effective manner, and as a result of that, rather than spending it with the utility company, we're gonna use it to fix the building. And we're gonna highlight what phase one did for you and how beneficial has been to the schools and I think they can attest and Dr. can attest to and what not only what it what forecast has achieved but what it's achieved today. So any, any questions on that? We've done a, a, I don't know, a couple dozen projects in the state all, all over for counties, cities, and schools and, and for one of our um, marquee accounts as well uh, serving the district here. So that's really what we're going to talk about. This is just a quick agenda. Talk about phase one talk about uh, the opportunity to um, use the same principles we use on phase one um, to work at um, locus growth and some of the needs that we will be able to fund and some of the, the needs that uh, we just can't fund through this program. Um, so we're finding the equilibrium between getting the things done we can uh, and using this process to do that. So real quick on phase one. Phase one was about $6.2 million. We did 50 different measures 
in the district, including lighting upgrades, mechanical systems upgrades. Fuel switching is just uh, buying the commodity at the cheapest cost, fuel, oil, and natural gas, and other such strategies. Propane, excuse me. Um, we did some building automation upgrades to make sure that the building operated at a cost-effective manner where you can put it under control. And uh, we did some water conservation measures as well. Uh, the forecast for the project was to save 32% of the annual utility costs. Um, early projections from both the school's representatives and our own is that we were ahead of forecast. So the, the project looked great. Again, it was roughly a $6.2 million project. And again, this was funded completely from the savings that we were able to generate by putting in energy effect, uh, uh, efficient equipment. We didn't have to come to the town meeting to ask for money specifically. We just utilized the utility savings to fund this project. Um, so you can see the combined uh, energy and operational savings was about 439000 But over the term of the agreement, which is 15 years, the savings are going to exceed cost uh, by, by a significant margin. Typically, these are done under a tax-exempt municipal lease, not a bond. So there are certain advantages to that structure for the, for the district and the county. It was done, again, as a 15-year term at a very effective rate. 2.6%. Um, if, if you look at the last time interest rates were this low for this period of, uh, um, extended period of time, it was almost 60 years ago. If you look across the United States and in Virginia in particular, the average age school in Virginia is, is between 45 to 60 years old, which is about the time interest rates were this cheap. So it's why, why they were building all the schools at that time. The cost of capital was, was cheap. So it makes it very effective right now to take any operational savings that ABM can generate and leverage that into capital. So it's a, it's a very attractive time to do that. Um, again, it's no adverse effect on the general fund. It doesn't put increased burden on it. It actually extracts money out of the general fund that's not being uh, effectively used because of old and efficient equipment. And the results, of the, again, of the program are guaranteed. They have to be by statute. So if I, for instance, here, the four hundred thirty five savings. Uh, ABM has to guarantee it at the end of the guarantee period, which is each year. If we're short in any fashion, we have to write a check to the district for the difference. So in this scenario here, let's say we save 430 against the $439,000 guarantee. We have to write the district a check for the difference. The reason is that those savings, that 439 is what is used to make the payment on the lease. If the lease isn't achieved, then it would put increased burden on the general fund and effectively would have violated the covenants of the program. So. This is a list of needs. It's a busy slide. I really apologize, but it's, it's really next for trade. There are a lot of things that these buildings need still. Why we funded the 6.2 million, there were still a lot of stuff left on the table because some things can be capital intensive. Um, some things that are needed in the school building don't produce a savings. They're just a, a capital requirement. So some, a lot of those things we had to eliminate. But if we look at this list, what are the things that we could fund? And actually I will tell you this list, just here was valued at about somewhere between two and a half to three million. But we can't fund all that. So we're not recommending, but to fund this, we would have to come to the county, uh, to the Board of Supervisors and ask for additional funding and we're not, we're not doing May that. I interrupt here? Because sure. what, one of the uh, uh, requests that we had is if you're in there doing a review, do a comprehensive So you use the opportunity here to find out all the problems, yes. whether well, they're all with, the well, but I mean, <laughs> uh, a, lar a large number of them, and, uh, and, uh, and some of them are not going to be cost effective in, in this program to, uh, uh, to fix, That's correct, and sir. they would have to be looked at separately. That's correct. That's correct. So we wanted to, generally what our, our clients are saying, let's, let's fund as much of this as we can through the ABM program 
So if we have to go to the, the taxpayers or the board of supervisors or somehow look at some other means to pay for the things on the list that can't get funded, we can at least say we've done everything we can with the money that we've already been appropriated. Just on the effective thing. So this is a list of things that we are going to be able to fund. It's, uh, I think, fairly comprehensive. Um, if you looked at it, it's what we're going to address is the majority of the, the electrical and mechanical. Uh, the automation needs, which is the control system, we want to be able to mirror that to the rest of the school. So we've got a Excuse me. Sure, sure. Now you say all of these were what you looked at the first time around. Have you, have you have a list of which you did do and which you did not? Um, This is these are two yeah. yet to be done. Yeah, this is the if you go back to that that slide, that's uh, that's what has been uh, reviewed in terms of the phase two analysis. Okay. And, and again, and what I would characterize this is this is only related to energy consuming devices. This is only related to HVAC type systems. This is not to, meant to be a complete. Okay. So this is these right. these are these are phase two, and. Uh, I was just asking you as well as a list of phase one that was we, that you did in, or you looked at and you didn't do. Yeah, phase All one right. is complete. Phase one is complete. We've already implemented a, a, a number of lighting and control and HVAC upgrades in the balance of the schools. That was about six point two million dollars. Okay. So we'll max out our energy savings there, and then we'll get additional to the school in two or three years. Also, want to mention that of that six point two million, there's close to two hundred. Which, which would not have been covered by their program. Correct. So, so it left a balance of needs in the building, especially as Locust Grove opened up. Here, um, Justin's going to show you a comparison of operating costs of a renovated school by ABM and one that isn't. So you can see the, the differential between the two. It's, I think it's pretty revealing. So he explained it, it, the movement from the slide that's full to this movement. Yes. Uh, to help, that was a similar to help explain what then came off. systems that actually would consume more energy and save energy so we couldn't get the economics to, to pay for themselves. So again, this the, the, what we structured is we looked at all of the needs is let's just let's hone in on the things that can be fully funded into the program. Okay, I'm trying to get a better handle on, on uh, what happened in phase one. You spent 6.2 million. Uh, you have reductions of 439,520. That is a guaranteed reduction. And the actual reduction was what? Well, we're not through the first year of the guarantee. The, all projections on the guarantee for the first year is that we're ahead of, we're, we're tracking ahead of the guarantee. So we're not, we're not at the end of that first year. Okay. Okay. September the 15th. Yeah. Round up. So yeah. September will be the first, the first reconciliation of the first term of the, the uh, Okay, then what does it mean, the phase one, two payments totaling 569, how does that fit into that? It means we've paid, you've paid down the loan by that amount since the, that's your dilution rate on the loan since the time you took the loan out. So you've paid that much off. Right, Something. Yeah. Something 170,000. In September, another payment in March, and then we'll be making a third one come in September. And the pleasant surprise for us was that we expected to reimburse ourselves from this phase one after the completion date of September 30th, but what actually happened is that we saved them up during the construction period that ended September 30th of last year to pay in full recovery due to first payment of $280,000. So we didn't have to borrow from ourselves and then pay ourselves back. We were okay. All right. So, so phase one had a, again, it was 50 different measures that we did in the building. So I, I really wasn't prepared to talk about those individually, but it was a very comprehensive, very large list of. Well, I was just trying to get the the results that we had thus that we were experiencing thus far. I, I think we're all in agreement. Very good. Yeah. Okay. What? I, I just wanted to say part of the reason we're in the phase two is because when we initially did this in phase one, 
we were only operating in eight buildings. So the empty building on 20 was left out of the plan. Now we're coming back, and what's really driving this most of all is getting that building on 20 that we didn't do that to uh, back in shape uh, so we can get the energy savings there that we can get from the others. And it expands to some of the others on this page, but the, I would say the big money items are gonna be in Locust Grove Elementary School and the replacement of the roof at the field house. Okay, field house being the dive door? Yeah, the hut. The Hornet Tech. Hornet Tech. Okay. The one that's leaking. Yeah. <laughs> Bad okay. shape. Uh, so again, just real quick, I don't, not a lot of time on the comprehensive uh, improvements because they, they can't get funded through the program. It's, it was a fairly significant uh, ticket item, about three, three million bucks. Uh, they would have, we, we would have to ask the Board of Supervisors to think of $150,000 in annual contributions in order to fund that. It was deemed not appropriate to do that at this time. Let's just focus again on maximizing the savings that ABM can generate uh, in, in order to fund the capital needs, which is about $1.2 million, just slightly over that. It, it, again, it's no incremental capital required, no, nothing to add any money to the program. It's just, uh, again, utilizing the, your uh, savings to the fullest extent possible. Now, I see automation and control upgrades uh, uh, on uh, some of the other schools. Uh, is there a reason that they weren't included in the first uh, round? So you were looking, you were picking the low fruit yes, sir. on that first one, <laughs> even though some of this may still be useful. Mm -hmm. right. Choices. Yeah. Okay. All right. The main yeah. buildings were functional on the old control system. Okay. But our but our uh, our savings on investment won't be as high as what we did earlier. Well, that's me. That's what our Locust Grove Elementary. Mm -hmm. Understand? Okay. Uh, the Locust Grove Elementary will have a big return. Okay. Now, now we want to Remembering the first time they came, the, the question was six million. So. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, versus eight. The yeah. So the uh, what we're trying to do now though is put a consistent control platform out there for the district, so that they can control everything from the same type. Right. Savings there are significant. So this program, um, I, I think we're really excited about it. I think it's going to do a lot of good uh, for the district. I'm going to ask uh, Nathan Rook to come to Augustus. <laughs> best friend. He left Nathan. <laughs> he left Nathan home, didn't he? Well, yeah, we had a <laughs> He's going to talk about the uh, technical solutions at uh, CDC. What he's come up with. Sure. Oh, yeah, Steve's office. Right. As we go through this, if you want me to stop and dive in. Um, to start off with Locust Grove, I mean, the Jackson River Indian is Cross State High School, so we learned a lot in phase one by implementing measures. Um, it is a newer facility, but that also comes with a lot of opportunity for energy savings, the lack of uh, commissioning, and the lack of control from the energy solutions director on the project. Although it's new, um, sometimes a big spec project will be with inefficient lighting, and not only is it inefficient, but the lighting levels throughout the building um, in a lot of classrooms are lower than they should be, and especially in the gymnasium, the lighting levels are very low there. And it's inconsistent throughout. Um, the boiler there today, very large uh, dual fuel boiler, it is required to run all year long just for domestic hot water. So today, when my, my truck's sitting nearly 100 degrees, the boiler's running to consume energy to produce hot water. And so we would decouple that and put in a separate system um, for the domestic hot water so we can keep those boilers off on summer and things like that. <laughs> So, so that's a large, that's a large piece there. Makes so sense. <laughs> <laughs> With the, and we learned this lesson that even over Prospect Heights, new buildings with their failed weatherization and some roof wall penetrations, we're not only losing cool and, and warm air, we also slid the pipes um, last year, or a couple years ago, mm -hmm. Prospect Heights, and so we, I mean, we learned a lot there to go ahead and get that building wrapped up and tight so that does not happen. It's a very complex system, HVAC system there at Locust Grove Elementary, but it's got a system is not smart enough to keep up with it. And we saw that with uh, Prospect Heights. If you have the ability to have visibility within your building, that only helps the maintenance staff, but helps the operations staff run the building more efficiently. In my opinion, that's the reason we're overdriving uh, a lot of the savings in phase one, because the staff has more visibility into what the buildings are doing. With the older control system, you can kind of see, yeah, it's 72 and it's on, um, but it doesn't dive deep enough for Bradley and John to really jump in there and diagnose things or does the operation Uh, 
Um, I, I talked, there's limited zone control in some of the older con control systems, um, meaning during the building on, the whole building's got to run, even if they're just using an annex building for a special event or something of that nature. So breaking those apart and not having to start a whole building to utilize, you know, a couple thousand square foot of it. Um, the controls that are in the buildings that were not, didn't have new controls installed in phase one, they're very proprietary in nature. Um, you need to go in light foot especially, those parts are not as readily available um, anymore. So they kind of, you're, you're running to fail and uh, getting those up, and those are some of the worst ones that have no visibility and no remote access. So you say the maintenance crew is out and you need to go work on something. They would either need to drive back to the shop to look at the control system or hope to open phase in the office that weekend for the evening. Um, that is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> so those, getting all those on one platform, um, the maintenance staff has been trained on that platform um, through phase one. So training, uh, having great new technology doesn't mean that the maintenance staff's not trained on it. So we brought everyone up for training, to training, and uh, we'll continue to do that ongoing as you know, software upgrades and things like that happen. Um, then we go over to the Hornet Sports Center. So we would have leveraged some performance contracts and overdriven savings um, to put into the roofing budget. Um, it's kind of a critical path item because that entire building is a fall zone during that point. And so it, it's not something you want to do in September and or you know, in the middle of the school on like your you know, worst natural hours or something to that effect. Um, but it would be with a, you know, a better commercial grade standing seating roof instead of the asphalt shingles. There's a lot of dips and valleys on that, on that uh, building. One question. Yeah. Just a question. I was just going to say we did explore solar uh, for the roof. That's one question we raised about if you're going to go in and work on this, is there any um, uh, savings for us to at least uh, explore that? Because you know, right. We we looked at all renewable sources. Um, it's not only good for the public eye, public doesn't get spoiled as a killer because they get spoiled at home. Um, but unfortunately, the climate in Virginia meaning energy costs are relatively low compared to state north or state south and there's no state incentives um, like there is if you go north or south so we're kind of stuck in that middle there is a federal 30% um, that we can monetize you could not tax exempt but that's just not enough to make it fun we're looking at like 60 70 year payback for the solar panels so uh, outside of PR value that has no value to it yet I had a question the, the older buildings uh, you're talking about uh, zoning it is are the, the systems in place, can they be zoned? I mean, are they, they I, I, I can't, I don't know what kind of systems there are. Are they two pipe, four pipe, or what, I mean, what kind of systems in there? That it's more of a, uh, a block zoning on scheduling. Instead uh, of oh, saying, okay, okay the, the building's occupied from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., this side is, but, you know, the admin area or the, the classrooms on that side would actually end at 3.30, yeah. giving oh. more, more flexibility to the zones of the control system. Okay, okay. okay. See the contest on that one. Every one building has individual rooms and can be controlled up to the individual rooms. When you did the hot water change out, what type of hot water did you use that day? Uh, we went to um, Prospect Heights and we, we scoped the St. James Observatory building there. Um, we scoped a high efficiency condensing tank style um, domestic water system. I, I believe the brand's Lockbar. Um, so it's a 93 efficient with a very high recovery rate so you don't have to hold hundreds and hundreds of gallons you can only hold about 150 but we can heat about a thousand an hour okay. and that's why you didn't go with a tankless style because of having to have that storage that and water quality um, it would get a lot of granular and uh, there's, there's a lot of bus stops in water okay. and that would be a maintenance nightmare on the um, on the tankless I did that at my house and I'm on a well
just show you a comparison of prospect sites pre and post and what we're forecasting for locust growth pre and, po uh, pre and post construction. So you can see prospect is running at about $245,000 in annual utility costs. Right now it's running at um, 131000 Pretty significant savings, about 114 grand. Uh, nearly cut it in half. Uh, locust growth, we're going to get a little bit lower than prospect sites for a couple reasons, but uh, savings there, about 83000 So significant savings and gain there. So just to show you the comparison of a building that has been retrofitted versus one that isn't. So the differential is locust growth, um, not upgraded, is running at 210 versus uh, one that has already proven itself and is running at 131000 does that relate to energy savings, either BTUs or kilowatt hours or whatever? I mean, you know, I, I, I know it the, tracks the money somewhat, but uh, yeah, there is a uh, there is a way to take the cost per square foot and convert to BTUs per square foot to normalize for um, whether it be water savings, uh, thermal savings, or electric savings to normalize. I, I don't. The engineers didn't. Well, we did all our calculations. Energy engineer didn't give me that number, so I can't set it for you now. Um, but what we're I, what we're trying to quantify for you is that the dollar savings are going to be great enough to service the gap. So the, the leaks. So the the two forty five is that a is that a colder winter? Is that we actually it? typically will look at a two year average of utility spend, so that the anomalies of weather, the anomalies of occupancy, generally work themselves out over a two year uh, a two year window. I was just wondering the difference between the two forty five. They had the, the same issue, but the op opposite effect. Um, Prospect Heights is overventilating the spaces, um, meaning they're just dumping tons of outdoor areas, whereas Locust Grove Elementary is not ventilating enough, and so it's running it was running lower. So what you have just been a lot of other areas up to two hundred forty five areas on the board in the park park. Okay. Which is, uh, not that's not what you just said. Quick uh, question for you. Um, you said you had a lot of energy loss especially at Locust Grove. How do you measure that energy loss? How, how do you figure that energy loss? Through uh, envelope, building envelope type stuff. Okay. How, what uh, generally process our guys do will do thermal use? scans. We have okay. guns and take pictures and do thermal scans of the roof, the windows, the doors to see where we're getting leakage. And now is that with any, if you've got blower doors on when you're doing this or just the natural? Just the natural. We don't pressurize okay. the building. Okay. So you don't do the pressure. So the pressure no, we're trying to get it to mirror the way it's actually going to operate virtually. Okay. Okay. You remember what the uh, what your projections were for the uh, Prospect Heights School in terms of uh, annual costs? Construction costs? No, no. You said the uh, uh, the, the savings are one hundred fourteen thousand. That's what I'm just saying. Okay. What but were you what, what what did you? That's what you're experiencing now. No, those are those were our engineers' projections. Oh, those were the projections. Not to the end of that first year of the guarantee okay. period, I can't right. say what it actually is. Okay, all right. We have done construction audits that, that are definitely show the positive direction, but we start in September and the full audit. Okay. Check it once so we're going to get another briefing in September? Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> the other okay. thing I would point out is to, to Doug's point that the construction period savings, which is the period when we start construction until we're done with it, uh -huh. that that period actually saved enough money to make the first year payment, which I think is significant. That's a and that wasn't even in your project. That was in addition to your projections. Yeah, we don't guarantee those construction period savings because it's it's really hard to track. We sure. don't know when things are going to go and be installed. And so you're um, guaranteeing from the time your construction is complete. That's correct. Anything you go that's anything that's uh, pre-construction is all for the school's use, and they need to make that first year payment. Okay. Everything over and above the guarantee is also for the school's payment. Okay. So if we finish ahead of uh, schedule on savings the way we expect. Some of the other things on the list here that we need to fund is okay. okay. One question for you. In the cost savings, you convert it over from one fuel type to a different fuel type. Are there any adjustments in here for the lower fuel costs? Since that uh, the actual, say, propane was, say, at $3, and it's at $2 now. Right. Is that calculated into your figures at all? It is. When we give the final when we give the final report to you and present it to you, 
it'll show what the energy costs, how energy costs affect the final dollar savings. So you get here's the unit saving and the dollar savings and what the fuel adjustment uh, might have. So your fuel adjustedness. Yeah, yeah, it would have, what it may have done for you. Okay. So just for clarification, in terms of the design of your program, as I recall, you are not as a contractor, you're not sharing in the savings no. at all. You're, you're, you make your money off the equipment and the installation and design. We're, we're a design build contractor. You hire us to do this work for 1.2 million and all savings are for the school's use. Because there are programs out there that, that are cost sharing in, in the savings. There are, uh, <coughs> there are. But this is not that. <laughs> you're not sharing at all in the savings. Yeah, I know I, 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 you, you answered a question I didn't have to ask. Yeah, this, this, is, this, is, you know, this is a guaranteed thing. I mean, if we make any savings beyond that, that's gravy. Well, he, or if we make any savings beyond the 15-year period, that's gravy. Well, we have upside but not downside. Mm -hmm. yeah, in, right. in the shared savings programs, you have downside and no upside, really, because right. Right. The, the, usually it's a scale that – the, the better they perform, the more the, the bigger percentage they, they get. The, the bigger percentage they get. Yeah. And there's an incentive for you doing that. Yeah, but right, but right. this is not that, this, that right. type of and program. What I like about this program, what I have, the reason I like it so much, is at the end of this, the school gets something significant that they otherwise couldn't get. This is a, a, a capital program that the other ones can't get funded. Well, they'd have to come to you and say, I, I need money. Well, the other thing, by, by them being able to keep the savings, there's, there's, an, there's an incentive for them to manage the building. <laughs> Uh, Doug, for example, and his staff to manage the buildings as well as they can, yeah. take advantage of the equipment. So that, that's what we like about the control system. Yeah. That's what we like about the control system. It allows them to manage that more closely. Uh, this is just a slide uh, to demonstrate. If we operated the buildings on the, the left-hand side of the screen and did not we continue to operate as we do today, what would our cost be over the next 15 years versus taking action? And you can see it's a differential. Do nothing of about three point six million dollars over the <coughs> fifteen years versus what we're showing about what our projection is a million, one point seven million. So the differential is, is really significant. Now are you uh, factoring in energy or inflation or any of that in that? We, this? we do use national projections on what uh, we have a couple reports that we cite on what is the expected inflationary cost on energy, water, natural gas, uh, propane, so you know, all of those get factored in when we look at this. And on an average, if you use an escalator somewhere between two and a half to three percent is going to be. You know, some years you, we have seen utilities take a seven to ten percent increase, and then it's flat the next year. So it generally normalizes at two and a half to three percent. Okay, so that's one point seven five in in fifteen year from now dollars. Or is that uh, in I don't dollar or is that? Average it, no. uh, so, I mean, this is <coughs> so this is in today's dollars. Yes. Okay. All right. this it's, it's a bit of an eye chart so it's and I just wanted to show you the way that the program works the area in blue is are all the savings or the funding sources right and and then the white area are, is the cost of the program so based on the way that the program is set up right now over the next 15 years this program is actually going to save the district just short of fifty thousand dollars more than it's going to cost the district so it's going to be in a cash flow positive uh, situation now, the way that the cash flow shows up right now, if you look at column K all the way to the right, you see the negative years in parentheses. When we actually set up the lease, uh, I will I, I can um, adjust the amortization of the loan so that at any given year the school district is going to be uh, at a cash neutral position, never at a negative position. So we can we can easily adjust that with the cut uh, different gains. We're forecasting right now at 2.7 percent with Bank of America. A one <coughs> school district, they're a national provider. They, they uh, really provide excellent service to us and most of our clients. So um, we've got a commitment for them. While this is on the smaller side of projects that we typically do, a lot of banks are not really interested in this smaller project. But because Bank of America has them today, one, they, they plan there to do this project. So we have appreciated that. They're, they're a good partner of ADM. In terms of their loan to you, do they make that as is that because this is for the school system? Does that make it a uh, uh, a tax free for them? No. Um, let, uh, let me uh, explain the nuances of uh, the way that the, the loan works. The school district actually takes out the lease, mm -hmm. just like any other construction project. Okay. They take those proceeds and put it into escrow account. As we complete the project, they pay us. But the payment.
payment on the lease doesn't start until the end of construction. I wasn't thinking of that. I mean, the, the, the funds that you get to put the, to do to do all the work, the 1.2 million. The fact that it's a governmental loan is what makes it tax exempt, not, yeah, not, okay. not our me, function. I, can I, if I could, Mr. Chairman, kind of jump in here. I'm gonna uh, just, I'm gonna say this just, and, and Dr. Tanner, is that the, 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 the bond market treats this as a, as a debt of the boards. Um, as a what? As a debt of the board of supervisors. Okay, all right. So we have to work through with Davenport on our underwriting and, and things. I, I don't know at this point the, the amounts, you know, in the, uh, it's real money, and, and, but it's a negligible amount. The county's not having any, any upcoming bond issues except for perhaps a public radio system, but that's several years out. Meanwhile, the trend line of our debt service is paying off principal. So we're going to have to sort through that. I'm looking back at Glenda and I, and I get my, my story right, but I, I felt certainly a, a transparency to make you all aware of this, uh, this situation. But the school board is actually coming, you know, very responsive, showing you know what the what the process is. But at the end of the day, it is uh, debt that goes against the county. And, and as I recall, the, the, the six million dollar project that you, in phase one essentially ate up all the capacity we had. Davenport, and, and maybe and then some, uh, frankly. And so we, but that's been time enough has passed that. It probably fits within the capacity. I guess we don't have the answer from Davenport at this point, but uh, right. And I do have a call into um, into Davenport for a revisor just to talk through it with them and um, and the current scenario because things are you know things have changed quite a bit since they did the six million. Um, and our budget has increased. We had a you know tax increase last year that brought our whole expenditures up, which plays into our ratio of um, debt service expenditures total. So, um, the more you spend, the more you can borrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, there are a lot of lines, there are a lot of negative slopes and positive slopes. Uh, I, I understand, I understand. And so, we just want to make sure our advisor is aware of the amount, okay. what the schedule is, and things like that. No, I, I offer this up not saying that, I, that the school board should, should slow down or not go forward, Jerry, but I'm doing my job. <laughs> <laughs> the, what I characterize this debt uh, is, 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 is self-liquidating. It, it really pays for itself. It's not a burden on the taxpayer. It's a burden on I the understand. Right? And, so and, that, and, that's, and that's... It has some attributes that are attractive. But e even though it does show up, it's, uh, it, the, uh, it's sort of like we've got a... Uh, a uh, new revenue source of, uh, uh, of uh, savings. Right. All right. Um, you know, this is just to show you the impact on the environment. It's not to minimize it. It's, it's, it's pretty significant. Um, you know, reducing the power in 316 homes, 2,500 acres, it's like planting 25 acres or so conserving 2,500 acres of trees. Uh, you know, it's very positive. Uh, it's, it's not only beneficial financially to you, it's beneficial district, but uh, in, in terms of being a, uh, a Green Virginia partner, which ABM is, uh, we, we like to highlight what it does for the environment as well. So uh, again, we're, we're seeing about a 40% savings at Locust Grove. That's 83,000 in annual savings, a, a little bit more of uh, maintenance savings associated with lighting and some other aspects of it, which provides the ability to fund $1.2 million. Projected lease is about 2.7%. Not to belabor that, I, I, it's a great project for, for you. It's an extension, almost a changeover with the third phase. You know, just see the, the contract being uh, replicated of what uh, we negotiated with the, the first phase and the population was still concerned that this, this is good to go. Is it, is it fair to say, as a generality at least, that the, the, the savings at uh, uh, Locust Grove Elementary will allow you, allow us to fund the uh, Control systems and all the other work. I mean, I, 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 my guess is that yeah, those are more or less yeah. break-even yeah. kind of things. So. And then it then it puts it, uh, an even tractor dog in all the buildings. You can, you can look at all of them from one single location or from the west because it's road based too. So, um, you know, the other thing that I like about the tax exemptness of the lease for you, should you decide at some point in time that you become, um, let's say, your chapter system changes, you have the ability to pay. Off. I know. <laughs> I said, oh, didn't mean that as a joke. Um, but should it change, the fact that it's a uh, tax exempt lease versus a bond, it's easily refinanced, it can be easily paid off, uh, terms which you don't have in bonds typically. 
of the 275 is. Yeah, why that'd be tough to. Yeah, uh, why to give we, up. <laughs> we can't earn that, but we it certainly cost us that to, to borrow. What control systems are all the systems on? Are they Honeywell the systems? Uh, the, the schools that have been retrofitted with an open platform. So it's software dependent, not hardware as much in that case. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the reasons I was asking is as we do move forward with other county operations, we may be able to integrate with the same system platform that you all use. And if the platform is built security into right. and clocks, you can, you can pull the same one for the okay. framework. Okay. Is there a phase three? Or do you think uh, you've captured all of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, and we've had that that meeting a while back. So you have but bricks and mortar ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and explosives. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> One of the challenges we have is we don't have as many square feet at the schools. There are a lot of buildings on the, on the schools. It's larger. Actually, my question, I, I meant it to be somewhat yeah, I, serious I, I in, it's in terms of, uh, you know, if, if there's a roof replacement and there's additional insulation that can be done or, or these kinds of things further down the road, well, uh, are there other other things out there that, that could form a phase three? The, the only thing I would tell you is technology is always changing, like computers, right? Um, you know, we didn't do a lot of LED retrofits in the school district, but LED lights, the cost of LED lights are coming down at some point in time, even when in low cost, environments like you see here, uh, LED lights will be, um, the, the really interesting thing about that is a 10-year uh, guarantee on those, so you, you don't have any expense associated with changing out LED lights. We're doing a lot of LED work, but it's an area where the utility rates are a little bit higher. So I think as technology continues to evolve and grow, that's more likely where you see the advances in the district than um, Summary, we're, we're, we're as I'm speaking for the uh, school board, but I, I think we're, from our perspective as a contractor, trying to get as much of this done before the heating season so the school the kids get back, especially the roof. We, we really like to try to get started in July. That meets uh, with all expectations. I think the project financially and technically is, is sound. I, I think we're here tonight to measure the strength of the board's alignment on uh, the project. And I, I think we're we'll looking. What, what is your estimated construction? guys have some flexibility in the addressing the most disruptive disruptive things first such that you can try to yeah we'll sometimes we'll work nights and weekends and work around the school office hours to try to facilitate as expedited a construction schedule as possible and the, the steel roof you want to expedite that because the domestic mills have taken the foreign mills to court for 
dumping steel and they are placing tariffs and steel is going to move up. Yeah, yeah plus so, the, the, the certainty <laughs> is that, that the longer we wait to buy materials, the more we're at risk on cost. Since this, I didn't mention this, but since we're, it, we offer a no change order, this, once the school says go forward and they sign a contract for 1.2 million, that's the deal. So if the price of steel goes up, the price of copper, anything goes up, any movement, we're hit with it. We don't come back and ask for more money. So all of this stuff does, is time sensitive from that perspective, as is the cost of money. Apple right now, 275 is subject to market rates. If we don't lock in and close soon, can go up, can go down, and, and that changes. And we don't have much room. We're only 50,000 positive over 15 years. A few basis points change in interest rate does put things at risk. Any change to the contract itself is it essentially the same contract? The same contract, contract just, adjust, just add a scope, to describe the scope and say, but other than that, it'll be the exact same terms and conditions. And from our perspective, I don't see any reason why there's no new. It's a state contract that we use. And we were running some new uh, savings piece and a new scope piece total of 20 something pages as an addendum to the terms and conditions that's already been reviewed. Okay. Yeah, it's easy to do. Any additional comments from the school board? Yeah, I just would like to comment on something Mr. Wright brought up about five or six years ago, maybe seven years ago, there were a lot of vendors going around uh, giving pitches to school boards that said, you know, pay us so much money and we'll guarantee you uh, so much savings. I, and along with the former superintendent, heard a couple of those pitches and we did not sign any contracts at them, but we did get an idea that there was some savings there and school system, school board, hired a part half-time employee to walk the schools at night and tell us, and we've gotten some savings out of that. We mm -hmm. still have that person. So this has nothing to do with ABM. This person was on before we ever heard of ABM, but I just want to let you know that we, we have a half-time position that's walking our buildings at night and making sure everything's what it's supposed to be, and that's... That, that's showing a savings that we can count on even before we got involved with ABM. Mm -hmm. One thing to definitely keep your eye on the LED uh, situation. Out at the airport, there's a flagpole with a floodlight. It's the only thing that's on a particular meter. And it was averaging five kilowatts a month. Four months ago, a gentleman put a LED light in there. There has been zero kilowatt and the light is still actually working. It's not <laughs> it's unplugged or anything. The light is working, and literally, instead of having 20 kilowatts of uh, usage, it is still at zero after four months. Wow. So, so the, the reason uh, part of our team couldn't be here tonight, uh, Nathan is the gentleman that they know who works on their first base. He is at um, Southampton Schools right now talking to their board, and, they're into, and we're putting LED lights in that, that district. But it's they, they have a little bit different utility rate over there. I can tell you personally that they have really done a nice job. They've worked with the uh, principals and with the school system on <coughs> getting into the school so they're not disruptive to, to the education. <coughs> I live close to the high school, so when I was walking, I would walk down by the high school, and I can tell you, last summer at 7 and 8 o'clock at night, they were down there working because I just kind of looked like, who is this? <laughs> mm -hmm. But they were. And we've been very, very, very satisfied. Isn't that right, Dr. Tanner? The <laughs> We've been very satisfied, yes. I think they've been um, over and beyond providing us with any information or any, I think actually I shared some with you, um, information to give us um, to support um, their documentation and stuff and, and, and to echo what Judy said. Um, you know, she and I are in town, so if there's any buzz around it, she and I are generally gonna hear it first. And I don't think any of our principals had any problems with them being in the schools, um, no disruption, easy to get along with, did what they've said they were going to do. They said they'd be there at night, they were at night. Um, so. From an operational standpoint, any issues with the amount of lighting is, has changed and it's not as good or it's not as cool or not as warm or <laughs> those kind of issues, have you, have you seen? Because sometimes when you start tinkering with these things, it, it takes a little bit of time for people to adjust their own uh, habits and comfort and things like that. Just the opposite. We now have consistent lighting. All the lights are pointing and have lights that are pink, green. Looks like this one up here right now. Yeah. Right here. Some of these uh, surrounding lights. Are, uh, 
Yeah, you guys really need them. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you guys need to hire these guys. Well, the locker rooms you don't need to worry about because that's where they take showers anyway. So when the water, rooms, <laughs> yeah, tell them not to worry about. It. Well, no, I was at a basketball <laughs> game a couple of years ago, and they had to stop the game because the roof was leaking. Graduation, we said with an umbrella. Look at my eighth, my son's eighth grade graduation. Do we have but any uh, questions or comments from the board? Lee, I, I was going to add something too, which Doug um, or the gentleman didn't add. Um, right as we begin the first phase of this project, we had a major issue. Was it at the field mm -hmm. house with the boiler? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. It was actually the chiller. Okay, the chiller. Before we had signed the contract. Before we signed before the contract. We was a huge savings. So, in which was a, a yeah. savings rough estimate? Um, I think the cost on that, I suppose, was probably uh, eighty thousand there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That they stepped up and did, and they didn't have to. I, one one of the things I liked about this is, yes, they finish a project and they get their money right away. But they're 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 committed to us for the long the length of that loan. So. Uh, in other words, if this equipment doesn't start to produce enough eight years from now, they're still on the hook to either make it work right or make up the difference. So it's not just like guaranteed for a year. It's the whole whole loan. Right. Any comments from the board? The only thing I want to see is the thing from Davenport. What's that? Yep. Yeah, we want to see the board from Davenport. Make sure Davenport. Make sure we're not into uh, getting ourselves over overextended. And beyond that, it's I mean it's been cost effective so far. Mm -hmm. How long before we, we can, can get some results back, back from? I would just expect to be able to talk to somebody tomorrow. Okay. All right. Anything else? I, I just want to say I, I was not on the board at the time that this was done. I was very skeptical. I was very skeptical, uh, and I was also concerned about tearing out new equipment basically to put in more new equipment and uh, I followed it very very closely and I am pleasantly surprised at what the results have been very pleasantly surprised so um, because I was not I was not happy with it I'll be the first one to admit it. It, it concerned me because of the debt against the county and what it was going to hold the county back from doing and I didn't really did not think that the return would be as good as it's been. So, kudos to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I knew from the beginning it was the worst thing. <laughs> 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 okay. So we didn't count either one of your votes. <laughs> 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 they canceled each other out. So <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Okay. That. Great. What, thank you. Before, what, what's the next move? Then? I guess our, our, our move is to find out uh, what Davenport has to say, and then we need to uh, 
Do we need to hold a vote on this? Uh, that, that's kind of the peculiar state that we find ourselves in. The school board certainly has every authority to do this on their own, but that would be without this board's uh, uh, approval, disapproval, or concurrent. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll drill down. I, I think there's been enough movements with budgets going up and our ratios coming down that, that this amount of money should fit within that. With the disclaimer that this does go against the county's debt was one I wanted certainly to make, make sure that you all already knew that. Um, but as soon as we uh, learn from Davenport, I'll communicate that to you all. Well, I would think that if, if Davenport's not uh, not uh, concerned about this, I would I would uh, say that we should go ahead. Yeah. What, one of the things that you're rightly so about steel and contracts and time is of the essence. So why don't uh, um, we'll communicate back okay. to the board of what the findings and we'll make a judgment on what what that really means and whether it's significant or not. Can we have our board meeting on uh, this yeah. Friday night? Yes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or can we, we do should, a contingency? Can we get better? something back to them on Monday so they can move ahead? Yeah. As soon as we communicate to you, I will in turn communicate back. To when will you be together to vote on it? As far as the board, mm -hmm. it sounds like we don't need to. I'm okay. not sure. It seems to me that you didn't vote. We're not, we're not going to vote. Uh, you've got a, a, a uh, somewhat of a nod uh, subject to the discussion from Davenport. Okay. And if we're concerned, we'll get back to you on that. But other than that, one of the biggest reasons for the concern is the communication system. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, communication we system that. is something that will affect mm -hmm. everyone in and passing through this county, and we want to make sure we have that capacity. Right. We understand so that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But we've already paid 500000 right. off uh, on I that. So we're really only asking for 700000 <laughs> 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 Only yeah. 700000 And, you know, like, right. we're, we're working within okay. the time constraint here, too, of school and that kind of thing. Right. Well, what we'll do is, is uh, uh, Mr. Davis, working toward that, he and I will communicate this week uh, with both boards, and then we'll, 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 we'll How about if we operate that? There is no showstopper unless we learn from it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when, I mean, have you, have you already set up the RFP for your roof, or are you setting up to do that, or? We are set to go once you guys approve their loan. We're ready. That's all done. We have pricing everything there. Okay. I think that should be the idea. Go out there and have a. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, can you find more style when you're out there? Oh, yeah. I got one out there too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am a tough end of this day. I think she heard me. Yes. That's just no problem. You do have a black shirt on. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lord, we welcome you to this meeting. We give you respect and acknowledge you as our source of wisdom. As we begin this meeting, we ask that you would guide our thoughts and our actions that we may govern as you would. Help us to accomplish our tasks while displaying your character. Amen. All right. Uh, any changes to the agenda? I have none, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I get a so motion? Move. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. We're off and running. First item is a presentation of resolution of appreciation for Officer Perry Grimes.
Whereas over the last several years, Officer Grimes has been an integral part of the Central Virginia Regional Jail Workforce, a program sponsored by the jail to assign inmates work detail services to the member jurisdiction of the jail authority, which has been a great success. And whereas across our community, Officer Grimes and the workforce have partnered with many county departments, including Parks and Recreation, the Animal Shelter, the Airport, Public Works, the Landfill, and Administration. And Officer Grimes has taken the lead in coordinating, facilitating, and overseeing the various projects throughout his tenure with the workforce. And whereas Officer Grimes' management of the workforce has included over 200 hours of mowing, trimming, weeding, spraying, raking, and trash pickup at the Barbersville Community Park and Booster Park, and installation of a new shed and fence post boards at the playground, the reattaching of a new backstop at the ball field at Barbersville Community Park, and the painting of the dugouts at Booster Park. And, whereas Officer Grimes has also overseen the workforce in the patching of the driveway leading to the animal shelter, painting and moving of cages inside the animal shelter, mowing and trimming at the animal shelter and the airport, assistance with landfill projects, and many miles of roadside trash cleanup. And, Whereas throughout his service with the workforce, Officer Grimes has developed a respectful and working relationship with the inmates, using the program as a learning experience, one in which he instilled his sense of pride and value of presentation to the inmates, in turn teaching the inmates to appreciate their work and attention to detail. And whereas the work of Officer Grimes and the workforce is reflected throughout the county and their beautification efforts and attentive work has ultimately led to making the county a better place for citizens to live and play. Now, therefore be it resolved on this ninth day of June, 2015, that the Orange County Board of Supervisors hereby extends its admiration and appreciation to Officer Perry Grimes for his accomplishments, dedication, and service to the County of Orange through the Workforce Program. Signed, Lee H. Crane, Chairman. Thank you. Next is the presentation of accommodation for the sequestrial committee. Got it. There's that word again. <laughs> that might be the last time you have to talk about it. Uh, okay. All right. Yes. Do I need to come out there? No, you can stay back there. All right. Okay. You can take your seat. No. <laughs> Mr. Chair, members of the board, it is my pleasure to come to you this evening and um, make you aware of a commendation that we received from the General <coughs> Assembly of Virginia for our Orange County Sesquicentennial Committee. And I have a few members of the Sesquicentennial Committee in the audience, and I'm going to read down through all the members. And when your name is called, if you wouldn't mind please standing so that you can get acknowledged. Alan Alterman, Bill Graham, Clay Corbin, Craig Raines, Dolores McDaniel, Frank Walker, Greg Mertz, Ken Tillman, Mandy Dean, Matt Reeves, Mark Leach, Patty Palmer, Pete Rainey, Phil Odebear, Robin Nemo, Sharon Ellswick, and Steve Sylvia. Without these individuals and their hard work and dedication to Orange County, this commendation would not have been uh, possible at all. Um, and the commendation reads, the General Assembly of Virginia Commendation, the Senate and the House of Delegates of the Commonwealth of Virginia hereby offer sincerest gratitude to the Orange County Sesquicentennial Committee in recognition of their commitment, dedication, and partnership with the Virginia Sesquicentennial of the American Civil War Commission, offered by Speaker William J. Howe on May 25th, 2015. And if it so pleases the board, we'd like to get this framed and hung here in the Board of Supervisors meeting room. Okay. 
maybe it's our turn to applaud the people out in the audience. How about that? So, uh, and uh, maybe it would be useful to get a picture of them all grouped together with getting the, uh, and showing the, uh, Absolutely. the uh, accommodation. That would be wonderful. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Come on down. You wanted to get your picture I wasn't taken again. For myself, you wanted to get your picture taken again, so come on down. Go sit. Go exactly. Go sit. Orange County Review, so the citizens of the committee of the community know who have uh, been out here uh, busting their tail making this all work. Over, okay. here, over here in the accommodation corner. Yes, well, I'm going to go ahead and that. I've got my picture taken enough, so y'all go ahead. Oh, you can stay. Hey, don't you? Yeah, you're going to go ahead. You need to uh, direct her, uh, Brian, to <laughs> be in this picture. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Can we get everybody here? Is this good? All right. Any closer? <laughs> I want to make sure the citizens know who has, uh, has done their uh, thing to help us out. And thank you all. Thank you all. Sure enough. Thank you. All right. Good. Thank you. We are very fortunate to have uh, uh, people willing to serve in this, in this capacity. All right. Uh, next uh, item of business is the public comment. Uh, do we have anybody signed up for public comment? No, then we move on to the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. No lawnmower today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Parks and Recreation Quarterly Report. Better not be. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to present the snapshot that was in your brochure or your packet. A couple things from that. We had successful spring youth programs in gymnastics, Michael's Mile, and karate. Our adult programs, we had karate and tai chi, and we are starting another new tai chi session tonight, so that's been successful. 15 Wiser programs, we had a wood carving class at Barbersville Park and our former sheriff, Bill Faulkner, if you all, any of you all have been around for a while, he signed up and was actually first one to sign up for the next class. He's making a hound dog in the next carving session. So, not um, using the backstop, is it? No, not using <laughs> the backstop. Uh, King's Dominion tickets, our spring savings day tickets. We sold 85 this spring compared to 52 the year before and 42 the year before that. So things are on the rise with that. We're serving a lot of folks. And our Regal movie tickets are still very popular. We are busy gearing up for our Playing in the Park event on Friday, July 3rd at Booster Park. The gates open at 5, and entertainment starts at 5.45 and goes until fireworks at dark, which is around 9.30ish. We have local entertainment, uh, all free, not paying anybody, local folks showcasing their talents. We have some local food vendors this year. Funnel Cake Cafe from the Locust Grove area has funnel cakes and fried Oreos, uh, Snickers and Twinkies, I think. <laughs> the Strikes Donuts, which are a mobile unit they set up here in town on Mondays in Gordonsville, one other day of the week. Brewster's Ice Cream, which is from Madison, but they do a lot of events in Orange. And Home Fried, which is Vincent Seal, who has won the Gordonsville Chicken Festival a couple times. He's doing burgers, dogs, and chicken. So we have lots of local folks providing food this year, and we hope. Mr. Goodman's been out a few times to enjoy that. We've uh, raised yeah. some extra money for the fireworks this year, so we're going to have a little bigger display. I wasn't going to show a video thing this year, but uh, we had our Rapidan River Day Saturday, which is, we call it Rapidan River Day, a special day for our special friends with autism. And we had six participants and 21 family and volunteers for 27 folks out there. And uh, okay, we're almost ready to go.
There's no music. <laughs> There's no sound. You're here, though. You the <laughs> but you were in the room. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rapidan River Day 2015. This is Beth Seal, who runs Rapidan River Kayak Company. For three years in a row, she's opened her home and business to us and provided guidance and equipment for our event. These are some of our parents that are standing on the shore. The lady in the pink is Ann Lawrence Grasty, who was the spearhead behind this event two years ago. She came to me and said, I have a five-year-old with autism. What kind of programs do you offer? And I said, actually none, but what do you want to do? And I don't think she'd ever heard that before. So we came up, I had talked to Beth about river programs, and we decided to combine the two and came up with our Rapidan River Day. And these are our kids. This is Pierce. This is Ann's son. He is the inspiration for this program. This is Ben, he has been my buddy for all three years of the event. This is Sean, he's a new participant this year. This is John, he was there the first year but missed last year when we had to reschedule but came back for this year. Tanner, who is another new participant this year. And Zach, who also missed the first, I mean made the first one but missed last year with the rescheduling. The gentleman in the red hat is Jim Galls, he works as the crisis counselor at the Kes little, little school in Keswick. Um, it's a therapeutic boarding school for kids ages 10 to 15, and they have kids from all over the world. Um, very intelligent kids, but have autism and are learning to deal with life with that as well. Uh, he came all the way from Charlottesville. They bring a group with Beth to do a kayaking trip, and he heard about it and decided to come back and help us out. This is Ben's little brother and grandmother floating down the river. This next picture I like, it looks like it's a lot deeper. It's only about a foot, foot and a half. He's bumping along the bottom the whole time, but the picture is really neat. This is uh, Tanner's mom waiting to catch one of the other little siblings. These are some of our volunteers. We tether the tube so no one can float away on them. We'll push them out in the current and let them ride down. And uh, They actually walked up through a field. There's a better picture later and got in and floated down and just did that continuously. It was a pretty cool experience. Uh, John having a good time splashing me and getting me wet. This is a view up the river where you can see a lot of our participants in. The little <coughs> small patch of grass, little island grass you see way in the background, that's where they would walk up and put in there and just float slowly on down the river. It was quite an experience. A couple of our volunteers. Uh, Heather from the treasurer's office downstairs brought her, her fiance, daughter, and son to volunteer with us, and that was Sean in the kayak. This is Tanner and Eric, Heather's fiance, in the little small sit on top kayak. And these next two pictures kind of sum up our day. This is Sean having a, a good time getting Jason quite wet. And then this next one says it all. There's Ben. And that kind of describes our whole day. Well, that's it. And um, we'll keep doing the things we're doing. Any questions from you all? Thank you, Vince. All right, thank you. Okay. Next is the reappointment of the Tourist Advisory Committee. Hello again. Um, you should have in your possession a memo that I did with reappointments to the Tourism Advisory Committee. There was one revision, late revision. I made a mistake on there. The two-year term should have the expiration date of June 30th, 2017. The one-year terms at the end of the memo are still 2016, but the two-year terms are 2017. Uh, Jay Billy, Chairman of the Tourism Advisory Committee, and myself have reached out to um, all of the uh, appointees whose terms were expiring to make sure that they wanted to re-up, and all but one did. They're very pleased with the progress of the Tourism Advisory Committee and still wanted to be an integral part of that progress. So the only one that couldn't uh, do to scheduling constraints was Bonnie Robinson from Wall Enterprises. She represented our retail component. And so we reached out to a couple of different individuals asking them if they would be interested, um, Hannah Capus and Gail Danos from Melrose. So we're waiting for responses from them. If we do not get responses from them, then we will, uh, Jay and I will work together to um, 
uh, nominate some other individuals and have conversations with them and then we'll bring that information back to y'all once that is firmed up with them. So I'm just bringing this to you this evening to see if the board would want to reappoint these individuals. So moved, second. Moved and seconded, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, if I could just briefly give you an update on the work of this committee. I, my ping is we're getting some legs. Um, Mr. Frame and myself serve on, on that committee. Um, they have really kind of, in a year time, at least since I've been here, come together. Um, I think the Tourism Economic Impact Study has given them a lot to think about <coughs> because there were recommendations in there of what they could do collectively or the county could do to aid uh, the growth of tourism. Uh, also, we will be bringing forward, uh, if you all remember, uh, where we discontinued the visitor center at the Piedmont Crossroads Center, Crossroads Visitor Center, Center mm -hmm. in Louisa, uh, those funds were going to be recommitted to the Tourism Advisory Committee. It's, uh, it could be about 7000 and we've got some savings, so it may be up to about $11,000, that through a process they will s figure out what to do with those dollars to collectively market the county for, for all their benefit. I think it would be appropriate once they figure out what they're spending it on is to come back here and report to the board what they're going to be doing with that and then a follow-up of what actually transpired in the case. Thank you. Absolutely. And we're um, at the end stages of our drive tourism workshops that we do with Virginia Tourism Corporation. Our last one, workshop C, will be June 30th. And so we're supposed to be getting a graduation from the program. and.